Hey everybody, Barbara Drazka here, AKA The Deal Diva, and tonight we are talking about how to build an Amazon business to fund your lifestyle. So I wanna start with a teeny, teeny story about me. Um, so when I started in 2015 selling on Amazon, uh, I was um, doing RA, and let me just stop the share here so we can do face-to-face. -face. Say hi, Trent, how you doing? Hello. And uh, this is Trent Deersmith, by the way, on one side of me tonight, and uh, he's, I'm going to introduce him in a second. He's our little mystery guest for the next two minutes. Let me just tell you a little bit about how I entered Amazon and why my story is going to tie into what Trent's going to teach you tonight. So I started selling in 2015 in Amazon, right bumping up right as Q4 started. I even sold my sofas to make room in my living room. I'm not kidding you. I would hook up a trailer to my minivan and go store to store to store to store to store and do RA. And I banked 35,000 something dollars in just the six, seven weeks leading up to Christmas. And by Christmas, I didn't know my own name. So what I learned from that is uh, there's a tremendous potential in Amazon. But on the flip side, I learned that I wasn't building a business that was going to fund the lifestyle that I wanted. And I pretty much just made myself a job, right? And how many of you can relate to that? We've, we've all probably started that way on Amazon. So uh, I was working like 60, 80 hours, and um, I realized I wanted to create a business that, was, that, that could kind of run on its own, where maybe I'd have some touch points on it, but where I wasn't working all that time, but it was making even more money because I wasn't touching it. So that's the segue into introducing uh, you to my guest tonight, Trent Deersmith. Deersmith, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Trent. I, I uh, keep messing up your name. Can you pronounce your name for me so we all know the correct pronunciation? Deersmith. Deersmith, okay, sounds German to me. Uh, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. okay. So anyway, Trent tonight, um, he was one of my mentors when I started looking into what do I need to do in my Amazon business so that I am not working my Amazon business, but it's, it's running and making money without me being in it 24 seven a day. So that's why I brought Trent to you tonight. He's gonna to talk to you about what you can do in your business and kind of his story of how um, he grew his business in five months to like $100,000 a month or something. But I'm gonna mm -hmm. give him control of the screen so because he's gonna, he can tell you a story better than I can tell you his story. So Trent, thank you for being here tonight and it's all yours. All right, let me uh, share my screen, make sure everyone can see it. And just move some stuff around here on my desktop. Okay, so everyone can see my screen and hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so just a very quick housekeeping item. If you do have questions, uh, it's always helpful if you could use the Q&A as opposed to the chat, because they do get kind of lost in the chat. Uh, so I'd appreciate it if you could do that. All right, so the title of tonight's presentation is Product Sourcing Made Easier. I didn't call it Product Sourcing Made Easy because there's no such thing as Product Sourcing Made Easier, but if you have the right systems and methodologies in place, you can absolutely make it easier, and that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. So the agenda, uh, we're going to go through the details of my wholesale product sourcing system step by step by step. We're gonna go through the top five reasons why people fail and how you can avoid them. And then we're gonna do Q&A as long as we need to. So to begin with, um, I wanna share you with you a little uh, story and that is my first business. So the, the, the slide as you can see is entrepreneurs are like surfers and to be a really great surfer, you need to be on a really big wave. And let me assure you that Amazon is the biggest of big waves. The, the story I wanted to share is my first company, which I was able to sell for seven figures after uh, running it for about eight years, it was on a little wave. And it took eight years to get to $2 million in annual revenue, and then I sold it for a million and change. My Amazon business, we did a million dollars in my very first year, uh, and we're in, I think we've just completed our second year, and we more than doubled sales. So. Am I that much smarter than I was before? No, I just managed to become a surfer on a much better wave. So when you're thinking about the type of business that you wanna participate in, think first about the wave, because it's important that you're on the right one, because if you're not, things get a whole lot harder. So a couple of keys to success. Rule number one, um, I'm, a, I'm a realist, and I, I wanna make sure that we set appropriate expectations and I try to do that with the title and I'm going to do it with some more points. Expect it to be harder than you think, especially when you first start out because you don't know what you're doing. The good news is that it gets easier over time. 
Rule number two is commit 100% so you don't give up because results will take longer than you expect. Um, the reality of Amazon is that, you know, they're a $180 billion a year company and half of their e-commerce sales are from third-party sellers. People like me, people like you, people like Barbara. There's a massive opportunity. However, there's also a pretty darn steep learning curve in the beginning. And so I'm, I just want to set expectation that you should expect it to take longer than you initially think to achieve those results. And obviously if you give up along the way, then they won't be yours to, to, to have. So one of the ways to deal with that is to follow in the rule number three, and that's to follow a mentor. Um, so yes, Barbara undoubtedly for you folks would be a great mentor for you. Uh, my, my, my mentor was the fellow was over at the TWF formula who I interviewed on my podcast a couple of years ago. And that's how I got into this business. Rule number four is there's a lot of grunt work in this business, especially around product sourcing. There's a lot of grunt work. And if you try and do it all yourself, uh, it's going to be too much. It'll be impossible. So rule number four is you need to have systems that allow you to outsource the, the grunt work, the minutia, the boring stuff to a virtual assistant whom you can employ for $3 an hour, maybe $2 an hour, $4 an hour, somewhere in that range is about what we typically play, pay. Um, rule number five is you have to hire the right people to follow your systems and actually do the grunt work. And that's actually not that hard to do when you have really great systems. We've, I've been hiring virtual assistants now for eight or nine years and I've had a really uh, a great time doing it. Occasionally one doesn't work out, but it's really not that big of a deal when you've got the right systems. And then rule number six is in order to have any hope of being able to source products, in other words, land new wholesale accounts quickly enough to keep your business growing at a rate that you will be enthusiastic about, you're going to need to send a decent volume of emails. Now, is it absolutely 100 emails? Like, are you going to fail if you send 99? No. But if you're only able to send 10 emails per week, you'll never be successful. You're going to need to send far more than that. And when we get later in my talk, when I go through, you know, this, the, my system of how we did this, you'll see that it actually is uh, much easier when you have the right systems uh, than you might think. And then rule number seven is you need to look act, look, act and talk like a professional because in this business and in, in everything in life, you never get a, a second chance to make your first impression. So really what I mean by this is you better have a great looking website. No room for amateur hour here. No room for spelling mistakes. No room for poorly written content. And, and it's easy to have a great website. You go and you get a WordPress and you look at some other sites. For me, what I did in the beginning is I looked at Netrush and Etails. And I looked at their sites and I looked at the kind of content that they have. I didn't copy any of it, but it definitely informed me on the type of content that I needed to have on my site. So you may or may not be asking yourself at this point, why should I listen to this guy? So let me very briefly give you an answer to that. First of all, no rich dad, no rich parents, no college degree, parents divorced, and no silver spoon that I could find anywhere in my family despite looking very hard. What I did have was a burning desire to make something of myself. And I spent my early years uh, in commission sales and I, I learned a lot. And I fortunately made a decent amount of money, which put me in a position to start the company that I built over eight years, which um, I was then able to sell, which gave me more money. And that put me in a position to have some time to think about what I wanted to do next and ultimately led me to getting into this business. So my Amazon business was actually started as a side project. I had another, my wife and I were running a digital marketing agency for, we'd been running it for about four years and everything was kind of just humming along beautifully. We had one really big client. My wife and our team was doing most of the work and I had a little bit of free time. Or I guess I should say I had a lot of free time and, and I'd fill my free time with running my blog and doing podcast interviews and all that kind of thing. But in April of 2016, um, I decided I was gonna start doing private label and I wasn't very successful at it, to be honest with you. I got my revenue up to around 20 or 30,000 a month, which might sound like a lot, but there was no profit. And the reason there was no profit is in that business, um, I, was, I needed to spend a lot of money on advertising. So I spent all of my profit and then some on advertising. And 
on September 1st, after interviewing Dan Medores from the Wholesale Formula, I thought, wow, man, I like that business. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to do it right now. And within five months of that, we had increased our monthly revenue to over 100000 a month. We were making uh, around twelve or 13000 a month in profit at that point in time in what's called gross profit. And then um, I accomplished in one year what it took me eight years to achieve in my prior business. So when I talk about being on a big wave, that's what I mean, being, make sure you're on the right wave. And I was only working 25 to 30 hours a week um, in the initial six or seven months of my business. And, uh, and you can see on the screen, we did just over, just shy of 1.1 million in our first year. And I was able to scale it back to the point where by the month 12, I'd actually delegated myself completely out of a job. I um, maybe think a bit differently than, because I'm, I'm, I'm an experienced entrepreneur now. I don't actually like to work in my businesses very much. My goal is to work on my businesses, to develop systems, and then put the people in place necessary so that the businesses uh, can continue to run on a day-to-day -day basis without my day-to-day -day involvement. So how has my Amazon business changed my life dramatically? So just literally a month and a half ago, I bought this building that you see on the screen here. That is an 18,000 square foot building that we paid $1.3 million for. And it's a building that will produce passive income for me and for my family for probably decades if we don't sell it because it's a light industrial building. It's built out of cinder blocks that is not going to fall down anytime soon. So why am I telling you this? That you think, oh, Trent, I don't care about your real estate stuff. Without my Amazon business, I would have never been able to qualify for an SBA loan that allowed me to buy this building. I have this building because of my Amazon business and we're gonna operate, we're gonna put our office right up here on the second floor and then we're gonna take our warehouse and put it right down there. And these are all tenants in here. And those tenants are all paying the mortgage on this building for me and we get to be there for free. So it's an awfully good deal. But without my Amazon business, I would have never been able to qualify for the SBA loan that bought me this investment. So now we're gonna dive deeply into my product sourcing system. And, and if you take good notes, uh, you may be able to replicate this on your own because I'm gonna give you a lot of detail. So the very first thing to understand is that product sourcing requires scale. It's just like a production line for cars. That's why I cho cho chose that picture. So if you aren't sending a minimum of 100 to 200 emails a week, um, you're really not likely to achieve success before frustration sets in and causes you to give up. Now, everybody has different goals. So somebody, their whole goal might be to make an extra thousand dollars a month and that's it. Well, you don't need to send, send 200 emails a week to be able to get to there in a reasonably short period of time. I'm a, when I went into this, I had grand ambitions. I wanted to do, and I still, I'm, I want to build my business into something like an iServe or a NetRush or an Etails. They're all doing over a hundred million dollars a year. And that's where my ambitions are. So when I say product sourcing requires scale, something really, really big. For me, it was never just going to be, oh, can I just make my mortgage payment by doing this? So if that's, if your goal is different, obviously you can scale back some of the things that I'm talking about here. So how do you send greater than hundred emails per week? Let's go walk through it step by step. So there's a sourcing process. Um, in the TWF course, they talk about something called leaf sourcing in plain English that is randomly surfing Amazon and looking at products. It is literally not, not any more complicated than that because on every single product that you find on Amazon, you can just look at, well, who are the sellers of that product? And that's what you're really trying to find. You're trying to find sellers. And so all of these tasks in gray are performed by a virtual assistant. This is that grunt work that I was talking about. So you need to find sellers. Um, and ideally, and I'll show you what, a, what kind of seller in a minute, but you need to find lots of them. And then you need to use a software tool called Price Checker 2 to extract all of the products from their storefront into a spreadsheet. And I'll show you what that spreadsheet looks like in a minute. And that's what this little graphic is here is for. And all you're really trying to do, that's we call that lead generation. I am looking for products that if I could stock them, they would be good for me to carry and they would generate cash flow because they already have enough sales volume. And given all the other sellers that already sell those products, 
but there's still enough room left in the pie that if I could get myself onto that product, that it would make enough profit to make sense for me. That's all this process does and they end up in this spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a minute. So then what we do is we take all of those leads and we just import them into HubSpot. Take spreadsheet, file import, send all the stuff to the right fields in HubSpot and you've got leads now in HubSpot. So then uh, we send emails out to all of the leads that we generate. We have um, systems that make this quite easy to do. And then we call them because in this day and age, lots of other people are sending emails as well. So reason number one, why you have to have a really great website is if they happen to click on your domain and your site's ugly, you're done. It's over. Like right then, over. Um, but the, the phone, I can't underscore the importance of the phone enough. Email is great and it's very important. And, it, and we've had, we've won accounts where people have just literally just replied and said, I'm so glad you wrote to us. We've actually been looking for a new third party seller. As a matter of fact, one of our biggest accounts early on, that was how we, we won. But we got to $270,000 a month using this exact system. Um, then uh, if, if you, uh, obviously if you win the account or if they say no, or uh, sorry, if you win the account, then you're gonna do some pricing and mar margin calculations. And if those pan out, then, then you're gonna have a new product. That's it, that's the sourcing process. So let's get into the details. So when you're targeting sellers, as I mentioned, you can literally pick any product. And ideally you wanna pick a product like just have an interest in a category. I would encourage that you pick one category. And for me, what I like is I like a non-seasonal, non-trendy category. Um, because in Q4, I don't wanna be pulling my hair out. Yes, Q4 is a great time, you can make lots of money, but it's also uh, can be, I like to do basically nothing. Off. So if I have a business that is crazy busy in Q4, that doesn't fit with my lifestyle goals. So I don't target products, I don't target clothing um, because clothing in Q4, huge. I don't target anything that's like a gift because gifts in Q4, huge. So when, you, when you're sourcing, when you're leaf sourcing and looking for products, just kind of keep that in mind. Where do you want to be? What's interesting to you? Because you want to get traction in one niche so that when you're talking to prospective suppliers down the road a little bit, you can name drop because they're going to say, who else are you dealing with in our industry? Oh, well, I deal with this company and I deal with this company and this one. As soon as you can say that kind of thing, your close ratio goes way up because social proof is what social proof is. Anyway, so you find one of these sellers. So Designer Trends Inc. Well, okay, let's see if they're a company that whose products we might want to extract. So what I'm looking for here is I, I wanna look in the last 30 days and I wanna kinda look at their total reviews. So if they have total reviews of say 300,000 seller reviews, they've been around a long time, they're a big, 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 big third-party seller. They've probably got way more money than you do, way more credibility, way more suppliers. So to try and source the same products that they're sourcing, gonna be challenging. So I like to find sellers that are maybe just a little bit bigger than me or kind of similarly sized to me. So the way you can do that is looking at the total ratings and more recently, you can look at ratings in the last 30 days. So what does this tell you? For across their entire por portfolio of products, which you can, their stuff sells. If they've got no, um, no volume here, no reviews, no count in the last 30 days, all their stuff's not selling. So why on earth would you want to extract their storefront to try like to see these numbers, you know, um, 200 to 1,000 ish. And again, those are rules of thumb. You can pick whatever numbers you want. That's just what we did in the beginning. And the way this works, by the way, if you assume that people will leave a review about 3% of the time for the seller, which is the well, best rule of thumb I can come up with, you take their 509 reviews, that means this company got about 17,000 orders in the previous 30 days. And Amazon's average price product is 20 bucks. So that's $340,000 in revenue. Uh, that's great, they've got lots of volume. So Designer Trends would be, I'm, and I'm sure we've already extracted these guys, um, would be a company that I would say, yes, I would want to extract their product list. So then you use this wonderful software application called Price Checker 2. It does a beautiful job of extracting. Um, and you just got to make sure that you've got your settings right to get the information that you want in the way that you want it. And that's not that hard to figure out. There's all sorts of tutorials on how to do that. And then what we did was we would take that 
I built this spreadsheet in Google Sheets and the blue columns are data that all comes right out of price checker too. And then the gray columns were some formulas that I, so I just took one row and I built a formula and the formula is not complicated. It basically says, how much is the total sales volume, which comes from column G? How many FBA sellers are there who are at the low price? Like, so let's say the product is $19.99. If there were three sellers at $19.99 and then the next one was at $21 and another one's at 22, I would say there are three sellers in contention for the buy box. Okay, so if I took, and I had a, a VA went and looked and manually counted that for each uh, product. Um, so if I took the total sales volume, let's say it was a thousand units and there were three sellers and I would be the fourth, well, I would get one quarter of a thousand units. So 250 units a month. At 250 units a month, would it make enough profit, assuming that I earned a minimum 15% profit margin, would it make enough profit to make it worthwhile for me to, to carry that product? And so that's the column that we really would pay attention to. And any of the ones that had a number big enough that uh, it hit our target, we would import those into HubSpot and we would start sending emails out. So it's not any more complicated than that. It's just very laborious. Now a tool that I didn't have access to in the very beginning, which I absolutely love now, is a tool from Viral Launch. Because I used to think to myself, gosh, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could just have a search engine that I could say, hey, Amazon, show me a brand who's in, oh, I don't know, beauty and personal care or whatever that is doing monthly revenue of say 50 to 100 grand across all of their products for that brand. Well, this tool gives me the answer to that question. So this is my laser pointer. Um, and we now, uh, in addition to our mass email approach, which I've just explained, the other thing we do is a very targeted outreach to that is brand by brand by brand specific. Because ideally, having a product is great, having a brand relationship is better. And so I'm looking for brands that have certain criteria so that I can reach out to those brands and attempt to establish a relationship with them and carry all of their products. In addition to just the pure numbers, I would rule to yourself or not. Um, I like to have to go after companies, especially if I'm after a brand relationship. And by the way, some people, you don't have to buy from the brand. Uh, I interviewed a guy on my podcast by the name of Josh Lucas. And while never quitting his job, Josh has built a $200,000 a month Amazon wholesale business sourcing just from distributors. So he does it a little bit differently than me. In my case, I want to be within one direct airplane ride away from the brand. Like if I'm going to wait, really put a lot of work into pursuing them, because maybe they're a $100,000 a month or $50,000 or $200,000 a month brand, I want to know that I can also fly to them easily because there are going to be times during a relationship where I want to get face to face with them. Is that important for you to consider in the beginning? Not really, because you're probably not going to have to do that much travel. Um, this screenshot here was really kind of replaced by this one. I, before this tool was invented, I used to use Jungle Scout to kind of get an idea of the value of the brand, but I don't even really need this anymore. I should probably take it out of here um, because now I get that data very quick with one click right out of viral launch. And then the other thing, um, and speaking of distributors, Europa Sports is a, is a big distributor. Um, I want to look at how many employees that company has because the, you know, like one of the people on my team brought a product to my attention today and there was 6,300 and whatever employees at the company. And I'm like, no, don't want to because it's too big. Companies of that size, you can never figure out who the decision maker is. Getting through to the right people is virtually impossible because there's so many of them. And even if you do, the decision process takes forever and I'm just not interested. So I tend to target uh, companies that have, you know, under 500 employees kind of thing. All right, so now you have figured out, okay, I want this product and I want it from this brand and, and it meets my qualification criteria. Well now, how, who do I talk to? So what I recommend you do and what we do is, and our VAs do this, we'll go on to LinkedIn and we'll find out um, who should we, reach out to. And that's not very hard to do because again, with, it, that this is one of the reasons why I don't go after companies with 6,000 employees. How do you scroll through that many pages on LinkedIn to find the right person? So when the company only has, you know, 50 employees, the senior leadership tends to show up first in the LinkedIn results and you can find, oh, the VP of marketing is so-and-so or the person in charge of e-commerce is so-and-so. And then you can use 
tools like Snowvio or Facebook or whatever to find the contact information for that person, which is the tool that we use mostly is Snowvio. And it's not right 100% of the time. And if it's, if it's wrong, we just pick up the phone and call to get the email address. But we always like to make sure that we our first touch is with an email and that's how we do that. So what should you expect when you contact a brand? That. They're not going to want to hear from you. And the reason for that is because if you're going after brands that have popular products, everybody else is going after the same brand. So you, you have um, a choice to make. You can either go after lesser competitive products, in which case you'll need more products to achieve your revenue goal. Um, and then this won't happen as much. Or you can get good at explaining or overcoming this objection. And I'm gonna kind of give you some ideas on how to do that. Number one, before you pick up the phone, it's absolutely critical that you've done some homework and it doesn't take long, but you need to look at the brand's presence on Amazon. You need to look at a couple of their products. Are they good listings? Do they have great pictures? Do they have a great title? <laughs> Excuse me, do they have great bullet points? How many sellers do they have? Are any of those sellers running ad campaigns? And that's easy to figure out. Let's say I'm looking at a dog dish. I'll type in the key phrase dog dish. If no ads show up in the search results, then I know that none of the sellers are running an ad campaign. But you need to have that prep done. And then you also need to know your value proposition. So your value propositions are simple. It's how are you going to help that brand to improve their performance on the Amazon marketplace? And the reason, by the way, that they tell you that they don't want any more Amazon sellers is because they're all, the ones they have suck and they're causing them problems. Typically, un, they have, they'll, most commonly they'll have unauthorized sellers who they don't know who they are uh, violating their map, which is their minimum advertised price. And, and brands hate that. Um, and that's one of the key value props that you need to understand and you need to understand how to fix that and you can partner up with attorneys and they can help you fix that. As you're saying, they don't want more sellers typically because they have a mess and they don't know how to fix it. So your number one job is to explain in specific terms by talking about their products, what the issues are, what you think can be improved, you, how you're different than all the other sellers who aren't doing any of this stuff for them and how you don't suck. And even that will go wrong most of the time. You won't get what you want most of the time, but you don't need to. You only need to win like one or 2% of the time. Because again, go back to my, you know, this production line thing. That's why I say product sourcing is a, is a mass production line because you do need to go through a lot of numbers. Now, the better that you get at that conversation, then of course the higher your win rate will be. So what are the top problems? Kind of covered these already. Map violations, unauthorized sellers, negative product reviews that have not been addressed, uh, content that doesn't appear to be high quality or match the content that's on their corporate website. Um, the brand may not have a good understanding of the platform. I had one call me yesterday, uh, their Amazon person quit and they're in an area where finding a new person is going to be really hard for them to do. So uh, they're interested in having us uh, be their partner instead. Uh, too many third-party sellers, which takes a lot of control away from the brand, and then getting beat by competitors or having an issue with low sales volume. Those are the biggest problems. There are more, but those, that's it like 99% of the time. So how do you communicate your value propositions? Number one, have a killer website have a killer website that explains this stuff. And in the beginning, your website isn't gonna be killer because you might not know what to put on it. That's why you look at e-tails, that's why you look at NetRush, and that's why you look at the, the big sellers and you get ideas. And then what you'll find is over time, as you have more and more conversations, you'll realize that you're repeating the same answers over and over again. So that's when you're gonna start publishing blog posts, relevant content. And the simplest way to figure out, well, what do I write about is you should have a blog post that deals with that. And, and this is really, really important. Here's why this is so important. When you call into a company for the first time, more than likely, 
you're going to be dealing with someone who is not care about whether to authorize you as one of their Amazon sellers. So let's say that I'm talking to Bob in um, the customer service department. And Bob is saying, you know, we don't want any more Amazon sellers. That's what my boss told me to say, because that's literally what happened. And you say to Bob, yeah, I get it. I know you don't need any more. As a matter of fact, you need less. As a matter of fact, you know, based upon my research, you'd be better off with some better ones. And if you're open to it, Bob, I'd like to explain to you a few of the things that I see as being problems. And so he says, well, okay. So you explain a few things. And now Bob's starting to think, well, you're making some sense. But do you think that Bob will be able to retell your story to his boss or bosses as effectively as you'll told it to Bob? No, no chance in hell. That's why you create published content. So that when you get off the phone with Bob and you've explained to him that having fewer sellers is better for this, 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 and this, and this reason, you just send him a link to your blog post that explains all of that. And now Bob forwards that link to his boss so that his boss is reading, is hearing or reading your story in your words. And that's why content is so incredibly important. So making contact, um, as I mentioned, it's always over email. Um, this email template we used years ago, we don't use it anymore. We are continue, there's no one right email template. Don't, anytime you think that like there's this one right email template, you're, um, you're being misled. Our email templates change constantly because we are constantly split testing and looking for um, different ways to get through. We had a template last fall that worked great for like two months and then it just stopped working. Don't know why, doesn't matter. You just have to keep adapting. So always be testing. If you're sending your emails, split test, divide your, your send into two sends, try two completely different emails um, and see which one worked better. And then next week that one's the control. And then you're going to come up with some other version and see which one worked better. And then call them. If you are afraid of the telephone, if you are afraid to talk to people, you might as well just quit this webinar right now because this business is not for you unless you can get over it and learn how to do it. Because as you can see here, we made three times as much money by calling people as we did by email. Because it's really easy to delete an email. It's much harder to hang up on someone. And remember, you're not trying to sell them anything. You're literally calling them because you want to send them your money and buy stuff from them. But what you need to get them to give you is permission to be an authorized seller and give you the right pricing. Um, so if, like I say, if you're afraid of the phone, then um, unfortunately it's not going to work for you. So staying organized, keeping track of metrics. We use uh, HubSpot. They have a free version of this, which is quite sufficient for doing this. You can send on track all your emails, make and track all your calls, create notes of your conversations, create your follow-up activities, track the deals in your pipeline. The whole works keeps you super organized. We love HubSpot. Um, and it gives you dashboards and all sorts of things. So pre-call prep. A couple of slides ago, I said, before you pick up the phone, you better be ready. You better have done your homework. So before you, uh, there's a lot of text here, so I'm gonna read it, apologies. But prior to making your call, you need to already know the answers to the following questions. Are their listings well optimized relative to their top two competitors? What's been the trend in their sales over the last quarter? What's been the trend in the price over the last quarter? Both of those two bullet points, you'll get that from Viral Launch or Keepa, I think it gives you as well, and Keepa's free. Uh, are, uh, any of, are any of their current sellers running ad campaigns? I already explained how to do that. Responding to negative reviews, well, that's easy. You just look at their negative reviews and if there's no responses, guess what? Nobody's responding. And then what share, what is their share of the market for the listings that show up on page one? So if you type in um, cookie sheet or whatever word and the products show up and then you use either Jungle Scout or use Viral Launch, whichever one you like, to show you the sales volume of all of those products, let's say it all adds up to 100 grand a month and the product that you're looking at is 80,000 a month. So they have the lion's share of that market already. They're gonna be way less receptive to your phone call because they're already killing it. They're already dominating. But if you call a brand that's you know only 10% and you say, look, there's a lot of market share that you could be gaining and I see why you're not because of this issue and this issue and this issue, and this, issue this issue, you're gonna get a lot more of their interest. So it's really important to know your stuff. But a call script, because there's no such thing as a call script, there is a script for the intro to your call. 
one of the best ways to overcome your nerves is to know what you're gonna say in the first 20 seconds. So we are a professional online retailer and brand solution par partner located in so-and-so. I'd like to place a large order for several of your products, but I don't know who to talk to. Something as literally as simple as that. If you want to use that one, knock yourself out. Again, we don't use that one anymore because there's no right script. There's no wrong script. It's what you are comfortable with. But the, my, my, the whole point of this slide is if you are at all uncomfortable about the phone and first impressions being as important as they are, just memorize what you're going to say every single phone call so that you don't screw it up. So we've kind of covered this already. Number one objection, we don't want any more Amazon sellers. Don't try and tell them they're wrong. I agree with them because that's the truth. They don't need any more Amazon sellers. In most cases, what they need is fewer Amazon sellers and they need better Amazon sellers. And that's what the whole conversation of being prepared and understanding the state of their listings is all about. Never give up. If there's a brand that you want, just keep going after them. Every three months, another email, another phone call, every three months, because you have to remember, companies get bought and sold, people quit, people get hired. If they have a contract with a third party seller now, it's gonna be due at some point. Things are always changing. So if you're not keeping in touch, and this is what HubSpot is great for, because you can just set recurring tasks for yourself. If you're not keeping in touch, your chances of eventually capturing that brand are what? zero because you're not keeping in touch. So remember, it is a numbers game. The more emails that you send and the more calls that you make, the more success you will have. All right. So now we're going to zip through why people fail. Number one reason new entrepreneurs fail is they have the wrong mindset. They're coming into it with an employee mindset and not an, not an entrepreneur mindset. And mindset, get, it's like a muscle. It gets built up over time. If you don't have it, you can get it. So experienced entrepreneurs, we don't give up at the first sign of adversity. Instead, we understand that we're just doing it wrong. And therefore, we need to correct whatever we're doing in order to get the result that we're after. And we'll just keep on trucking and keep on trucking and keep on trucking until we figure it out. Whereas most people who are new, they buy a training course and their family thinks they're nuts. And their friends who are all employees and all have the employees mindset, they all think they're nuts. And they're all like, well, aren't you scared you're going to fail? Aren't you scared you're going to fail? Aren't you scared you're going to fail? And eventually, because they don't want to look too dumb, they just kind of let that little thing fall off on the side and they give up. And then they go buy another training course and they do something else. And then they fail and they buy another training course and they try again and they fail. That mindset, you will never, ever, ever succeed. You might as well stop buying training courses because it's not going to make any difference. There is no sh silver bullet as far as business opportunities go. Some are better than others for sure. That's why you got to pick a good wave. But I'll tell you, man, they don't get much better than Amazon. Not following a proven formula. Uh, virtually everything that I've ever learned in my life, I learned from somebody else. I, I haven't had too many original thoughts. And selling it ain't rocket science. Buy wholesale, mark it up, sell retail. That's it. That's the whole business. So the key is being successful at sourcing products. If you can do that, everything else falls into place. Like it's really hard to screw up the other stuff. The hard part is establishing sourcing products, establishing those relationships where you can buy products profitably. Also, being a tactician. Tacticians, uh, and I'm stealing this right out of Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, they try to do everything themselves, especially if they lack funds. And this is not a business that you can get in if you've got 500 bucks in your bank account. You need of disposable cash to have any hope of being successful in this business because without it, how are you gonna pay for your inventory? How are you gonna pay for the software tools that you need? You just have to have some of the money available to be able to do that. And you need to hire virtual assistants. The reality is the business, there are some virtual assistants for three bucks an hour to help you. There's not going to be enough hours in the day to get enough leads to be successful. Now, let me go back and say one thing. If your goal is to maybe just, you know, make an extra thousand bucks a month 
take what I just said and kind of toss it out the window because that is a much smaller scale of business than I'm, that I'm trying to build and most of the people who I talk to are trying to build. Product sourcing, as I explained earlier, does require a great deal of really boring grunt work. And I mean boring. Why would you want to do that when you get someone to do it for two to three bucks an hour for you? Lack of a sustained effort. Um, it is, my results are not typical. I, would, I am a highly experienced entrepreneur. I came in with much more money, but more importantly, willingness to spend that money when I first started off. And that's why I got the results that I did. Thanks to my systems and willingness, as mentioned, that's why I was able to get to 500,000 or 100,000 a month within five months. But then we plateaued for quite a number of months after that. And I got really frustrated during that period of time, but we didn't give up. I just kept changing what I was doing and kept changing our approach and changing our emails, and just little changes. And after six to eight months of being plateaued, we finally found a way to massively accelerate our growth again. And we are on yet another plateau literally as we speak, because now I pursue bigger accounts than I did when I was in the beginning, because when I win an account, I want it to be bigger. And the tactics necessary to go after these bigger accounts are not exactly the same as the tactics that we use to land the smaller accounts. So while I'm figuring that out through trial and error, because nobody has a training course for me, I am my own training course. While we figure it out, we plateau. Sometimes we even slide backwards because occasionally you're going to lose an account. We've lost accounts and it happens. It's called attrition and it's just a part of this business, which is why you always need to be sourcing new products. And then another big reason why people fail, and this is my last slide before Q&A, uh, is a lack of the key skills. So I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here, but landing accounts um, is the most important part of this job. And in order to be able to do that, you do need to have some good communication skills, both written and verbal. And unless you have an extensive background in sales like I did, um, you may not have these skills right out of the gate, but that's okay. Cause you know, when I started in sales, I didn't have them either. So by sending all these emails every single week, you're going to be giving yourself plenty of opportunity to practice and fail. And the byproduct of that will be, you'll improve your skills. What separates the people who succeed from the people that don't is while they're failing and learning, the people that don't succeed get frustrated and give up. It's too hard. It takes too much time. I don't know how to do it. Well, I'm sorry. Can't help you. The people who succeed just run their minds differently. You know what? I didn't get the results I wanted this week, but here's what I learned. And here's how I'm going to implement that knowledge next week. Next week, you still might get the results that you want. But again, you're going to do the same process. You know what? I learned some key things. In this conversation, I learned this. And in this conversation, I learned this. Da, 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 da. And eventually, if you have the type of mind that continually seeks solutions to problems, you'll get it figured out and you will be successful. That is what entrepreneurs are. We are professional, eventually highly paid problem solvers. So with that, I will conclude. I'm already starting to lose my voice and I'll open it up for Q&A. Awesome. Thank you, Trent. Go ahead and stop sharing your screen. And uh, I'll just come over here and start chatting a little bit. So I've got a couple questions for you. One, how long did it take you? Because you went through a lot of trial and error on creating, like documenting your processes. And I know in documenting my processes, uh, I'm a little bit clunky at it. A lot of things I just write down and then I'll do these disparate videos. So I know how much work it takes to document every little thing in an Amazon business. How long did it take you to get all of your documents, all of your videos, all of your trainings done um, to systematize the business? It's still happening. Two still and a half years, still happening. We're continually developing new processes in the beginning because I didn't have any products, I didn't need processes for pay-per-click campaign management. I didn't need processes for reconciliation. I didn't need processes for Amazon account health and all the other things that would be affecting you when you're a seller with products for sale. All I needed was the ability to source products. So initially, I focused on writing processes that I could give to a VA to source products. But as soon as you land your first account, Guess what? You got a shipment coming. You better have a process for reconciliation. You better have a process for prep. And then Amazon account health and then pay-per-click management and then listing optimization and, uh, and on and on and on. So we have, uh, gosh, uh, like 
80, 90 documented standard operating procedures now across all of our departments. Wow. Uh, so it, it's, and, and we're more all the time. Like right now, I mentioned to you, I'm starting to pursue bigger accounts. What do you think the very first thing I did was? Start to create a process that I can follow over a 13 week period of time to go after those big accounts. Because I didn't want it to be haphazard. I didn't want to forget stuff. I didn't want to look at the HubSpot telling me I needed to reach out to them again and think, well, what am I going to talk to them about today? Hmm. And I want to think that. I want to think it all out in advance and then I just execute, execute, execute. And that way, it makes it far easier for me to continue to be productive on a daily basis. Like I build the ship and then I go sail the ship. And I, I'm making improvements to the ship while I'm sailing it, but I, I kind of, I got a pretty decent ship by the time I leave port. Like streamlining it, making it faster and go more smoothly. You know, the and, word processes and go ahead. Sorry. And so that I can delegate all sorts of pieces to other people. Cause again, I only have so much time, right? Like I am exceptionally good on the telephone. So in a perfect world, the only thing that I'm doing would be scheduled calls with prospective brands. Now there's a lot of legwork to make that happen. So I create a process of all the steps that are involved in making that happen. And then I figure out who, which one could be done by a VA, which one could be done by Laura, which one could be done by Mitch. How can I delegate, delegate so I can spend more of my time talking to brands like I'm talking to you right now. Cause that's, the highest and best use of my time because nobody on my team right now is better at that than me. And I was going to, that leads me into the next question. I was going to ask you, what's your superpower? So I'll ask you guys who are watching this video, um, think about what your superpower is uh, in your, you know, what do you do naturally well that comes really easy to you? That's the thing you should focus your talents on and your time and energy and then delegate everything else. Let me ask you, Trent, what system do you use to track all the stuff you're outsourcing? How do you keep track of all the VAs and the tasks? I, um, and it, well, so I, I documented all of my processes and it used to live in somebody else. It, well, at first it was just Google Docs. I just built it on Google Docs and we used Trello and we tried to manage it. But not too long after that, I discovered another company that had a software platform. And so we trend took all of our processes and moved them into their software platform. And then about six months ago, I started to build my own software platform, which is now commercially available. It's called Flowster. Oh, and cool. so now it's flowster.app is the website. And so now all of our processes live in our own software because remember what I said, I like to work on my businesses. So when I have the only reason I have any role in my Amazon business right now is I had my sourcing employee, he left. So I'm looking for a new one and I'm wearing that hat in the meantime. Um, so I have a whole separate business, which is this software company. Right. And I'm starting a whole other e-commerce business, which is a non-Amazon business. So without processes, how do I, how do I get myself out of the minutia to be able to do those, uh, pursue those other opportunities? Now we've been tossing the term processes and systems, these terms around. So let me just dumb it down a little bit for somebody like me. You know, it's like, okay, well, what is a process? It's a checklist. Basically, yep. it's a checklist that I can, I can hold up this checklist and say, okay, I have to do this. Here's first, I have to do this first, second, third, fourth, and maybe even due dates on this and when they're supposed to happen. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's that simple of, a, of an explanation, but they say it's simple, but it's not easy type of thing. Yep. Um, but in the end, when you have a list of, che I have checklists for my cat sitter for my house cleaner, for emptying the dishwasher the way I want her to. Like every little itty bitty thing, I, I write down exactly what flavor of food they should get on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's that bad, right? I have spoiled cats. So you can create systems and processes in every area of your life. Um, but for your, your wholesale-based business, um, I'm going to ask you to share three things with me. If these folks had to choose the top three things that weren't their superpowers, to outsource right away in their wholesale based Amazon business, what do you think they would be? Product lead generation, product lead generation, and product lead generation. Because that was what's gonna have the most impact, immediate impact on your bottom line. If you don't have stuff to sell and places to buy it, right? Then Correct. you don't have a business, really. You've got a it's hobby. The, it's the only thing that matters in the beginning. Literally, nothing else matters other than product lead generation. 
Brilliant. I love that. If I could drop a mic, I'm not going to hurt my mic by doing it, but mic drop. So Trent, I know that you have, uh, you've put all of these systems, now that you've created the software, which is phenomenal, Flowster, I uh, haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I will dig into it and play with it. Tell us a little bit about how Amazon sellers can kind of plug and play the work that you've done in the past year creating these systems. How can we plug and play that into our businesses? So I'll, if you'll allow me, I want to just give you the quick backstory. So these guys that have the, the TWF training course that I interviewed a couple of years ago on my show, um, after seeing in the first year how much we did in sales and how quickly we grew, Dan said to me, he said, how the hell did you do that? And I said, well, you know, I wrote all these documented processes and blah, blah, blah. He said, that's pretty cool. Do you want to come to our conference and talk about that? And I said, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. I like speaking. So I went there and at the beginning of my, and I was on a panel the day before and Dan had shared a few of my videos. So the, the house was pretty packed by the time I, was, I got up on stage for my presentation. And it was mostly this presentation that I just gave um, with maybe a bit more detail because I had a bit more time. And I said to everybody at the beginning, I said, hey guys, I'm going to like really break this down for you. Make sure you take good notes because I got nothing for sale. And so everyone was writing copious notes during my presentation. And at the end, as people were coming up to the mics doing Q&A, overwhelmingly the question was, Trent, I don't want to build all this stuff. Like you took you a year and now it's taken us over two years. Will you just sell me a copy? And that's when I kind of had my light bulb moment. I thought, mm, yeah, I guess we could try that. So I came up with a name. I called it the Wholesale E-Commerce Business System or WEBS for short. And we just took all of our processes and we made a copy of them, took out all of our, you know, usernames and passwords and that kind of stuff. And this was about a year ago, I think we did it the first time. Yeah. And, um, and we sold them and they sold like hotcakes. I couldn't believe it. That's why I have a software company, you know, because the demand for this stuff was so high that I needed a better software platform so that we can continue to evolve and improve the product over the, uh, over the years ahead. Now, when I invest in webs, can I add my own processes in there and tweak your processes for my business? Because no business totally. is exactly the same, right? So I can go totally. ahead and add very everything's quickly. Everything's editable. There's an, on every process. So the way we designed it, um, everything is a widget. You know, you've got a text box widget and, and I can show it to you if you want to, but you've got image widgets. You've got oh, that's it, you really want... cool. If you could get, pull, yeah, back the, pull back the curtain. Yeah. Let me uh, give me a second to get ready to do that. Yeah. And while you guys are, are talking, I just want to let you know while he's looking for that, um, that Trent has opened up entry into webs, right? So he only, he only allows a certain amount of people in for a certain portion of time. Um, and that's in 48 hours, it's closed up again. Uh, yeah. So he's offering that right now. Um, and you can go to, I'll, I'll put a, a link up on the screen after he shows us his demo. But I'm also tossing in a bunch of bonuses. You guys know that I'm a bonus maven, right? Um, I have the bundle masterclass. I'm sorry, the, I'm a, a bundle maven. So I'm actually adding, I'm giving you as a bonus, my processes for creating a bundle from wholesale files that look like they have no profit. I don't teach that to a whole lot of people. So all those spreadsheets that say, oh, I can't make any money on this. I'm going to give you my written process on how I actually find money in those spreadsheets. And that among six other things, and I'll show you those bonuses in a minute, are bonuses I'm throwing in when you uh, invest in uh, Trent Systems and webs through my affiliate link. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the whole bundling thing because um, one of the things that, and I'll just take, I'll go down this rabbit hole for a quick second because it's worked really well for us. We have a really keystone account that's in their niche, their, their brand name is super well known and they sell to Amazon, which is normally like a deal killer. Like you don't want to be on a product that Amazon's on, but we started creating unique bundles. Like we took this product that is sold by Amazon and we took this product that's sold by Amazon. And because they have such a strong brand name, because we don't normally create new listings, but in this case we did, we created a new listing and we made a bundle and holy cow, man, like this account makes us over a hundred grand a year. Yep. I agree. Bundling, which is uh, awesome. I agree. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. So what you're about to see, uh, please. If, if you were to have just purchased webs and you logged into your Flowster professional edition account, this is what you would see. So right here is just all folders and we'll go into some. So you can see there's a web spreadsheets and documents. There's a folder for all about product sourcing. There's a folder about Amazon. There's a wow. folder for PPC campaigns, 
product listing optimization, product prep, inventory management, shipping, supplier relations, HR, reviews and customer service, purchasing and financials. So let's go into purchasing, for example. So within the purchasing folder, there are five, and you can put it in grid view or you can put it in list view, it doesn't really matter. There are five pre-made business processes. So let's look at this one here. Um, so this is the, 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 the SOP, the standard operating procedure that we use when we get a new account and we're getting ready to issue a purchase order. So when you're getting ready to issue a purchase order, you are now putting money at risk because you're going to buy product. I don't like making mistakes. I don't like buying the wrong products. And I sure as heck don't like buying products that don't sell very well. So what we did, or what I did, and it's been improved since me, um, was we created, so when you get, when you buy webs, you get all these templates from each template. Now you can go and adjust the template if you want to, but let's just say you just want to use it right like it is. So you're going to, you're going to issue a purchase order. So maybe your purchase order is going to be PL 1301 or whatever. Um, so now you're going to run this workflow, a checklist. You're going to run a checklist that uses the SOP template for purchasing. Hmm. Okay. So here we go. As you can see for PO 1301, um, we have instructions at the top that tells people what the template's for, when to run it, who should run it. And then you have all these steps. So this is a big one. This is much bigger than the average SOP because this one's got so many important steps. So we want to check for product restrictions because again, we don't want to buy a product that has product restrictions because then we're stuck with it. So how do we do that? All these things here on the right hand side of my screen that I'm scrolling, scrolling through, that's how you check for product restrictions. Okay. So I've done that step. Um, now I've got to get a copy of the pricing and margin calculator, which is this tool that we, this tool, and you get a copy of it if you buy webs um, that we use to calculate. And I showed it to you is that spreadsheet with all the rows of products and it calculated all the margin. Well, you need to do all that, all this stuff in the pricing and margin calculator. You need to take a copy of the template. You need to give it a name. You need to save it to the correct place. Uh, you need to add a shortened URL linking the pricing margin calculator to the record in HubSpot so that we can easily retrieve it later. You need to add a shortened URL linking the supplier's Google Drive folder to their HubSpot record. So, cause that's our process. Okay, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Great, that step's done. Now what's next? Determine the high revenue SKUs. So here's the process for going through a brand and determining all the highest revenue SKUs, step by step by step by step by step. You get the idea. Wow. These are, I mean, there is a, a very high level of detail. So here's why I like having processes more than I like having, say, a training video. A training video is great and I can sit and I can watch it, but how do I remember it all? How do I make sure that when I go do the thing that the training video told me to do, especially if I'm delegating it, that it gets done exactly the same way every single time? And you know what? Unless you have the world's most incredible memory, you're going to forget this stuff. Never mind even delegate it. You want to make sure that you're doing, when you're the only one, you want to make sure that you're not skipping a step. So there's all these steps that we go through before we, well, like I should say, oh, this is pre-purchase order, uh, pre-purchase order, pre-purchase order, go or no go. So once we've done 21 steps, then we'll actually, okay, it's good. It's good to go. We call that compliance. The product is in compliance where we are double checking all of our assumptions early on. If it makes it through that, well, then we're going to issue a purchase order, which is step 23. And then after the purchase order, We've got other stuff that we need to do. And so we have steps and details. So create a Trello card for onboarding, add products to the WPI, which is our, another spreadsheet that we use, add products to our inventory management system. And there's all the steps to do that. Add products into the seller legend software app. Like if you forget this stuff, what do you think is going to happen to your business over time? <laughs> You know, basically, uh, these are, this is checks and balances and risk mitigation, just Correct. for sourcing. That's, and that, that was wow. one, one of 70-odd checklists. Yeah, and it wasn't just like one little checklist. Every single item opened up an entire process 
with yep. more ch more uh, items. I mean, you really drilled down and and made this detailed. Um, I didn't realize how incredibly detailed your processes were. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, I think that, that having these processes already done that I can plug in my wholesale business is going to actually save me not just time but money because I'm pretty sure I don't follow all of, all the steps you just laid out when I'm sourcing and I'm sure I make mistakes sometimes because I, I'm trying to keep it all in my head. Well, so, just think about, I mean, that was a highly detailed, was it 27 or 28 points long and each one of the steps had all sorts of detail. Yeah. And we, 70 of those. How long are you going to take to create all that? I, I would have to take myself away from my business during yeah. Q4 craziness to create those. It's going to take me six months. I don't even know how long. A long time. A long those, time. All of those processes took me and a team years to develop. Yeah, because you created the screenshots and all the instructions on the screenshots and um, in, incredibly detailed. Thank you for pulling back the curtain and showing that to us. Um, okay. So I want to respect your time and respect the time of, of the folks who are watching this webinar. So I want to be, give you the chance to uh, let people know about WEBS, W-E-B-S, which is not a course, by the way. It is a set of processes and systems uh, and instructions on doing everything in your Amazon business when you're sourcing wholesale and then some, I think. So I'm going to give sure. you a chance to take a look. And I, I also want to offer people up my bonuses. So I'm going to share the screen while you're talking. I don't really know what more to say at this point in time other than well, what I've kind of said already. Yeah, give me the logistics. Um, first, you guys can go to dealdevawholesale.com slash wholesale-systems, and uh, that'll uh, put you on my bonus page so you can see the things that I'm offering. Um, and then any of the links on that page will go straight to uh, a video where you can watch Trent give you a little bit more detail and then some testimonials and the ability to buy it. We only have 48 hours. The I believe that you're going to um, kind of – turn off the, the spigot of people who want to get these. Friday night. Friday yeah, night. Friday night. Right, 11.59 p.m. Eastern, yep. something like that? Uh, I always forget if it's Eastern or Standard. It's, it's around when I go to bed because I don't want to have to stay up too late. Yeah, guys, don't wait till the last second to do this. Yeah. Uh, and I know you're having a webinar tomorrow night that you're offering like a secret bonus yep. on. So yep. if you guys, uh, there's an email going out tomorrow morning to my tribe. So you guys check your email box and sign up for his webinar for tomorrow night where you can ask him anything about his business. Yeah. So tomorrow night's webinar, there will be no, no presentation like I gave tonight. I'm literally just going to sit here and answer questions from people who are considering buying webs. So and here's, then, here's what you get from me. You get my pro, premier bonus bundle that I created for webs, for Trent Systems. All right. So I customized it for um, around how can you be even more um, – uh, effective and efficient in your Amazon wholesale business. So first, very first off, you're getting my bundling checklist for creating bundles from CSV files from suppliers that look like they have no profit. And I'm going to give you, it's actually a video, but I'm going to take this video after seeing um, what Trent just showed me of how he's uh, created this in Flowster and how everything is written in screenshots. I'm going to take the video and I'm going to um, make it uh, visual and written with screenshots so we, you can plug it directly into webs in his format. So I will redo that entire um, process for you so it'll fit right into webs. A done few value proposition website. I don't know how many times Trent said on this webinar, it is very important right out of the gate he started talking about how important it was to uh, have a, a great first impression with these suppliers, plus have content on your website. We're gonna do that website for you. Okay, we're gonna, uh, we've got a, uh, we'll let you choose your colors. You can give us our logo. We're going to create that done for you value proposition website for you. Uh, my uh, developer will do it in WordPress and you'll get to go. We can turn that around in about a week. Wholesale company directory of 500 suppliers to get you started, just to get some ideas uh, going with types of products you can source in and categories. A 50% discount coupon um, for a vetted VA hiring at freeup.com and a lifetime discount off professional prep services with uh, uh, John Bullard Services, a spreadsheet of the top 100,000 best-selling products right now. And in fact, I'm gonna verbally um, give you uh, a bonus to that. I'm gonna give you 300,000, three different best-selling categories, toys, home garden, and uh, grocery. And then you get an hour private business strategy session with me. So uh, those are my bonuses. When you're ready, uh, you've only got 48 hours from uh, tonight, which is Wednesday, which means if you're seeing this tomorrow, you've got a day to go grab Trent Systems and, and like basically bolt it on your wholesale sourcing business, dealdevawholesale.com slash wholesale-systems.com. 
will show you my bonuses and links over to Trend System. And the last thing I guess I'll say is as you were talking about hiring a VA, let me just share my screen again, if I may. Please, yeah. With, Please within, um, uh, let me think here, within our HR folder, you'll see that we have a process for hiring a VA, which um, cool. has how many steps? There's six steps and each one of those steps has all sorts of details. There's a process for onboarding a VA. There's a process for dealing with VA holidays and vacation. There's a process for human resources pre-employment screening process. We have a process for, uh, well, we actually have two processes, one, one for getting references and one for specific job titles. And then we also have a hiring process for US-based employees. So when I say that we've got processes for literally everything, we have processes for literally everything. Now, Susan's asking if you can custom, uh, I'm sorry, if um, you're gonna update SOPs as things change in the wholesale world. Yeah, that was one of the reasons why I built my own software application. Uh, we didn't have the ability to easily do that. So because these processes are all customizable by you, when we create a new one, if we push it out, we don't overwrite what you created. We Great. just uh, It'll just show up in your account, the new version, and you can look at your existing version and you can look at the new version and you can manually merge the two and say, well, I like this stuff for the new version, but I need to bring this stuff out of my customized version into the new version. So you'll have to do that manually. But that is a better solution than, holy crap, you just overwrote my, my custom process. Like, thanks a lot, pal. We didn't want to do that. Well, Kristen, one last question that I'm going to let you go. I know it's uh, late where you are, and I want to respect your time. But uh, Kristen's asked this twice, so I want to um, let you answer this. Uh, she's asking, at what point in your business do you hire a VA after you reach a certain amount of uh, income per Day month? One. Day one. Day one. Day one. You cannot, Kristen, you cannot. And, unless you have small goals and you're only trying to, Make a make a just a tiny little bit um, extra money. Yeah. You can't. How are you going to do all the emails? How are you going to do all that legwork? Like, if you don't have a job and you have, you know, if if your if your husband, for example, is working and you and you're stay at home, okay, then maybe you could. But good gracious, why would you want to do stuff that you could get somebody else to do for two dollars and fifty cents an hour? How if, much is your time worth? You have to value your own time. I'll get on my soapbox a bit, but if that's your mindset, that's the wrong mindset. You're, you're just, you're not going to succeed if you're willing to waste your time doing work that somebody else will do for three bucks an hour. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave you with the same question that I started this webinar with. So you guys can really think about it tonight. What kind of lifestyle do you want and how do you build a business that will uh, support and fund that lifestyle, if the lifestyle you want is working 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week on a business that you're always working and if you go away on vacation or you have an accident, God forbid, it grinds to a halt, that's not a business. So you really need to think clearly what kind of lifestyle you want, you know, just get clear on that and then build a business that funds that lifestyle. And I think Amazon, I know Amazon is the way to go. Hallelujah, <laughs> that's, that's my lifestyle. On that note, again, mic drops, right? Um, thank yeah. you, Trent, for being here tonight. I truly appreciate you spending time with us. And um, you guys go to uh, uh, dealdivawholesale.com slash wholesale-systems to grab my bonuses and webs. You've got to do it by Friday night, this Friday night. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Bye.